Hi, this is Laura Sherwood, the Firefly Stamper, uh, lighting up one heart at a time. I hope you'll join me today as we do a fun fold card. I'll be using the stamp set uh, art gallery and I'll use a sentiment from the Dragonfly Garden. Let's get started. So here we are with our card and as you see, I use the art gallery uh, stamp to stamp this flower. This is a two stamp process flower. So I stamped it in the lighter color, Flirty Flamingo first. Then I stamped it with Poppy Parade and I used Old Olive to stamp the leaf. So in this two stamp process on this flower, I would have used this stamp as you see, it's been well used. It's nice and uh, nice and colored. <laughs> that stamp first. And then the second stamp that I put over to just to match up is this one here. And again, I'm not sure how it's the best way to, oops, so I see that. So <clears throat> there's that stamp. So that's the second stamp. And then the leaf uh, and the stem that is, is part of the uh, part of the set right there. So I would have stamped that. I'm going to go over our dimensions. I also use Stitch So Sweetly dies. So as you can see, I had dies for this and for this, and then a die for the little piece that is actually going to go on the inside of the card. And I've put that together just to simplify things um, uh, today. So I would have used that small die, and then I just cut out a piece of my uh, colored car stock uh, here. So that colored is the, um, the two colors that I've used. I have Old Olive and Mossy Meadow. So I cut out a piece of Mossy Meadow and just matched it up after I put twine around this. And I also put my um, gems on it. They're the gilded gems. I put three of those on. And then I fastened it to the back. And so that's going to be going on the inside of the card on dimensional. So we'll talk more about that in a moment. These two pieces will be uh, part of our fun fold. Now, if you don't have a punch, uh, this punch is no longer available, but you could do a square. Um, so whichever way. So if you decide to do the uh, punch, if you happen to have it from before, an inch and a half, or you could do squares the same. Now, my card base is the old olive. I could have very easily done these in old olive, or I could have done them in mossy meadow, because they're not going to be seen, but I wanted to be able to show them to you and more easily with the white. Now, our card base is a standard card base. It is eight and a half by five and a half. And then I scored it. I scored it at four and a quarter and I scored it at two and an eighth. So you can see that that basically uh, gives these two even pieces. And so then after we get the card scored, we're going to uh, take our bone folder and we are going to take this and put these out of the way, sorry, there we go. And we're gonna make sure that lines up properly and we're going to score it with the bone folder and score it with the bone folder. And then this other piece uh, that is here, we're going to fold in this way and then score it. So as you can see, that's just half the piece. So that's the base, that's the base of the card. So the card will open up and this piece will be going on the white. This one here will go on the inside like this. And then this will go here. So when that is open, that will actually secure it. So that's the base of the card. So let's just get this uh, and get this uh, put together. So the first thing I'm going to do is to take my the flaps for the front, which measure five and three eighths by two inches. So that's five and three eighths by two inches. So they are going to go here. But before we do that, we want to stamp this piece for the front. I'm going to stamp it down in this corner and I'm going to adhere it to this. And because these pieces are going to get scored in half and they're going to be part of the pop out mechanism for this card. I'll show you the card. So here's the card we're making. So the pop out mechanism, as you can see, you fold it in half and it gets glued onto the cardstock, the base of the card on both sides. That's why you need two. So you glue those first, then you're going to put on your two panels, and that is going to give you the mechanism needed for this card. Really a pretty card, but so simple in so many ways. All right, so let's get this stamped. I'm going to grab my 
my, uh, I'm taking the sentiment from the dragonfly garden and I'm going to put for a true friend. You want a small, you do want a small uh, stamp. So to fit in that corner, I'm just going to grab a block as well. And uh, I think this is my, it's probably my smallest block. And I'm going to stamp that right down in this corner. So I want to pull out, you can use whatever colors that you have. I can use either my uh, Poppy Parade or I could use the Flirty Flamingo. I think I'll use the Flirty Flamingo this time. And so there we go. And of course, this is a rubbered uh, back stamp, so I don't need anything underneath it. Now, I always suggest to people when you're when you're stamping to just stamp on the paper first to make sure your stamp is, uh, the label got put on properly and it stamps straight. I think that is stamping straight. So I'm gonna line this up on my graph paper because I wanna be able to give it, get it somewhat straight. So this is gonna go down in this corner. And again, you want a small sentiment, whatever you put there for a true friend. Now you could do a thanks on the inside, you could do birthday on the inside, but there is our uh, stamp. And then I'm going to use my Simple Chamois to clean my stamp. And I'm sure you're very familiar with the Simple Chamois. I love these because I keep them moist and I put them in a plastic envelope and then I pull them out as I need them. And it makes for a very easy uh, cleanup. So I'm gonna put this away back into my case. I don't know if you're like me, but if I don't put things away, especially when I'm working with more than one stamp set, um, I find that I uh, lose track of my stamps or they get into the wrong, they get into the wrong uh, set. All right, so the next thing we're going to do is adhere this piece, oh, stamp set, right? Always put your stamp sets, close them. And there we go, that's closed. And I'm going to adhere this one onto my other scalloped edge that's just a little bit bigger. Now you can use glue or you can use your runner tape, whichever whichever you prefer. And so we're just gonna do this. And then this is going here. There we go. Now, I am going to put this mechanism on using these two little circles. And again, these could just as easily be rectangles and it could be the same color as my card base, but for the purposes of this video, I felt it was better to do it uh, white so that you can see what's happening. So I'm just gonna score these down the middle. Uh, just, I mean, you could fold them by hand if you want to, uh, whichever way. I'm just gonna give these a little score because it'll be easier to, easier to put them on. So I've got my, my scoring device uh, off to the side here, which also is what I use for cutting. And uh, basically going to get that done so we can, makes it a little bit easier. So I'm gonna fold these in half. I'm gonna fold this in half. So basically what I wanna do is take this and I'm going to decide where I want that situated. I'm going to put these on the back in the middle. So this is going to go like this and like this, so they're basically going to be stuck this way. And then this side goes down to the paper. So I'm gonna do that right now. And uh, I think I will use the tape to do that. So there's one. And so this one, and then this one. So make sure you get them going the right way. So here, so you want this glue on this side. Here we go. So I'm going to have my, my little circle that I have here with glue on either side. I'm going to put these on the back. It might be easier for you to do this on the side. And basically you're going to put it in the, in the middle, thereabouts. So there we go, trying to do this with the, uh, out getting in the camera. So there's those two pieces on the back, as you can see what I've done there. And then I'm going to open these up like this and I'm going to put my adhesive on this side for the card. So it'll that way it'll open up and you'll be able to get that little effect that you're looking for. And, uh, and you could use double-sided tape here if you wanted to. I find this is strong enough to use. So there you go. So now you're going to take your, your card that you have here. You're going to make sure the center and actually it might be better to do that this way. 
you want to make sure the center is here. So you're going to, hmm, maybe this way. Might be easier for you to see. Okay, so you're going to put this so it's centered in the card, but you also want it lined up and straight. So there we go. So that's about center there. There we go. So we're going to push that down. Then you can take and put this one right there and there's your card. See how that will come out when you're when you're finished? Now the next thing you're going to do is you're going to put your panels on. So again you can either use glue or you can use the stamp and seal which is ever easier for you to use. Oh my brand new bottle of uh, a glue. I wonder if I have any left in this one. Let's just give it a shot here. There we go. So this will cover up your whatever you use for your uh, circles or rectangles. Now, this is the top. So I want this has got a direction to it. So I want to make sure. And I'm going to put this on. So this is a very narrow border on this um, panel. So there's one, one done. So you, you see I folded this back to put this on. So then when I go here, I'm going to fold this one back to put this one on. And here we go. I'm going to put some glue. Hmm. There is glue in there. <laughs> I may have to open up my new bottle, which is why I brought it out. I think I'll open up my new bottle. And uh, let me bear with me for one moment. And we'll get that old plastic cut off there, slick as that. And pull that off. There we go. So now we'll have some glue. There we go. So nice how it flows when it's uh, a new bottle rather than when you're trying to get it all out of the uh, old bottle. Now again, let's look at this. Make sure we have our front is this way. The top is that way. So make sure we have that on right. And again, sometimes it's easier to do this from the side, but again, you've got that teeny little border all the way around. So there we go. So there's our border and that's all looked after. So there's our card. There's the base of our card. Look how fast that came together. Now we are going to, I'm gonna come back to the flower for the front. We're actually going to put the piece on the inside now, I probably, well, sometimes what I do when I'm uh, doing my cards, I will wait and put the sentiment on later. And um, so whichever whichever way uh, you want to do it. I think I'll do this one as a thank you. So let's do this a thank you for your kindness. And the reason I like to stamp it prior to actually... Um, prior to actually putting my card on. So if I make a mess, I can fix it more easily. And I'm going to use the brighter color, the Poppy Parade for the inside. So here we go. Now, again, I my own preference is to ink it up and then stamp it. Because there have been times when I've actually not had my stamps on straight. And so I can check here or the stickers on straight, that's pretty good. Uh, and uh, I was stamped and then thought, oh no. So thank you for your kindness. I'm just gonna put that right there and I'm going to line it up on my graph paper um, somewhat here. I don't know if you use your graph paper like this or not, but I have a hard time sometimes getting things straight. So I like using my graph paper for that reason. And there we go, let's see if that's straight. And hopefully it's good enough. Oh, that's great. All right, so here we go. I'm going to ink or take the ink off my stamp and make sure it's clean when I put it away and make sure that we close the stamp, the ink pad. There we go. So that's going there. And then this is going back in my case so I don't lose track of what I'm doing. And... Um, I am going to now put this on the inside. So I think I will use my glue. Oh, and I picked up the bottle that is empty. Let's use the glue here. 
and we've got, because it is brand new, we have lots and lots of glue. I'm just using the tip to kind of spread it around a little bit. There we go. So here we are. Thank you for your kindness. Uh, you could decorate the inside more as well. Um, I will do this, and I see I got some glue on the side. That's all right. We'll wipe that off. And there we go. Thank you for your kindness. So this piece is uh, that I mentioned for the inside. And again, you can use glue or you can use, I think I'll use glue because it is bumpy on one side. So I'm going to glue this. And you could use double-sided tape if you wanted to, if you felt you needed the extra. And I'm just going to be generous with my glue without being too gen generous. We don't want it to uh, go over. So you see with this piece, I've taken my little scalloped edge and I've just wound twine around it. Now, if you have something, uh, it has to be something quite thin, so some sort of twine, and then wrapped it around. This is just to give it a nice effect. So this here is basically going to go, so it will be centered up with this front piece when it's open. And uh, so I'm gonna put that right there. And there we go. I'm gonna hold it down a minute where it's quite thick. Make sure it's well secured. So that is gonna be your inside. So look at that. Isn't that pretty? So we are going to finish the front now. I'm gonna put this right out this way. And now with the front, we are going to use dimensionals. And the uh, dimensionals I have are right here. And I'm just going to put some on the back of the flower. Now the stem I can't, so I'll stem I may stick a little bit of glue on, we'll see. So here we go with our dimensionals. There we go. And I'm going to use my, my uh, pick tool to take those off. But let's see where the, the flower edge is going to be here. And then the flower is going to be here. So I'm just gonna put glue on the back of my stem and uh, put my stem, make sure my stem's on under my flower, of course. So we just take some of our glue and I like to dot it. So I just get a little, little bit. I have found that sometimes I like to start off in a larger spot before I start so that I make sure I don't have it coming out too quickly. So there's some of my dots of glue. So this, I want that one to hang over. And so there we go, that is going there. That's gonna go, and then I'm going to pull the backing off of this flower. And I love my pick tool. I know I say that I think every time I'm on camera, but uh, it is uh, very, very convenient. Now, this flower is going to go here, and I want it to actually overlap, and I wanna make sure my, my pieces are on Oh, nope, that was the one thing I didn't watch for. When you're putting your dimensionals on the back, uh, make sure that your dimensionals don't go over the edge that they're going to hang. So we are going to use the flat edge of my pick tool. So here we go. We're gonna take this off very gingerly so we don't tear anything. But the edge on this little paddle from the pick tool is very convenient. I'm just gonna throw that one away. And that's going to be fine. We just learned to fix our mistakes. So there we go. So now I can have this hanging over without it uh, having sticky on the back there. So there we go. There's the front. I am going to add a bow. And uh, the bow I'm going to add is actually going to be from the um, same material, the same twine that I used for the inside. And I'm going to do, I think, a triple bow. So as you, if you've seen this done before or not, you want me to do that again? So you take your thread, your twine or, or ribbon, and you're basically gonna wrap in a figure eight. So there we go, one, there's one on both. There's two on both fingers, three on both fingers, and then I'm gonna give a piece out here quite long so that I can get my knot done. So when I do my knot, Maybe it'd be easier if I turn this over. When I do my knot, I'm gonna take this end piece, I'm hold, my thumb is holding everything there, I'm gonna put it through my fingers. So in through it goes. And then when this one comes up, this needs to stay here, but I need to bring this piece up between my fingers and I'm gonna thread it through the bottom and then I'm gonna pull tight. 
and that's going to give me my bow. There we go. So we're going to add this bow uh, to the card, and I'm just going to push these apart so you can see that it's a, a multi-layered bow. And uh, here we go. And you can play with it, whatever you like the looks of. So and I am going to use glue dots uh, to put this on the back of my card. And I'm going to grab my glue dots right here. And I am just going to decide which is the front of this bow and which is the back. And I would say this is the front. So we're going to take our glue dots and we're going to, um, oh, there's one right there. We're going to take that glue dot, just push the bow in it. And then when I lift, it'll come with it. So there's my glue dot. And then I decide where do I want my ribbon? Where do I want my bow? And it's stuck to my finger. So I think I'll put it right there. And we are separating the, the bow. There we go. And then I'm going to uh, take my pieces of twine and trim those. And there is my card completed. So there's the front of the card. There it is flat for mailing. And then when you want to stand it up, that is your card. I hope you've enjoyed making this fun fold card. If you have any questions, please let me know. I would be happy to answer them. Have a wonderful day and have fun lighting up someone else's life with your cards.